Oh, Lord, we love you this day. We thank you for the power in your word. We thank you how life-changing your word is. We thank you that you are the living word. Transform us, O oh Lord, by your power, mercy, and grace so that we can do great and mighty things in your name. In Christ's name, amen. 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 So today we're talking about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which has the power to break all kinds of chains. And I, I, I don't know where I got the picture from, but I like it. So we'll lead with it. The word mm -hmm. of God is powerful. It is life changing. It is amazing. But let's talk about, let's go back and review the gospel armor briefly. So we get a picture of how this looks together. Yeah. So we're in um, Ephesians 6 and picking up verse 11 again. Uh, put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Okay. We talked about this before, of course, uh, about how much, uh, much of the armor, of course, is defensive, but the, war, but the, uh, the sword is obviously the one offensive a uh, piece of equipment that's part of this armament. Uh, for we do not fight uh, against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world. And again, uh, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's the okay. key verse here. Yes. Yeah, because it does, it does define clearly the sword of the spirit is the word of God. No, that's the clearest equation made. I think of uh, any of the scriptures that I've seen. I've seen a bunch here from all over the Bible. Um, but this is this is a, a cornerstone for today's study. Amen. For the Word of God is uh, living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, per piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow, huh? Yeah. Okay. So let's kind of outline from this passage what the Word of God does. Yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it does what a sword does. It pierces, it yeah. cuts, mm -hmm. it, um, it, uh, it uh, separates or divides or, um, I mean, it's like, a, when you think of it as like a scalpel, uh, the way a surgeon wields a scalpel, scalpel yeah. to get after uh, problems and uh, issues within. Um, this is what the word can do. It's, as it says, piercing, even to the division of soul and spirit. Um, yeah. there, there, there's a... Um, a discernment there, a um, distinction between soul and spirit that the word can make clear and bring forth. I know. Joints and marrow, uh, same thing. We, we have um, a, a differentiation. Um, joints, of course, uh, connect uh, uh, bones. They're hinges for bones or points of, um, about as close as points of contact come. Marrow, of course, is the substance of the center of bones, uh, responsible for making much of your red blood cells. Um, the um, 
And uh, as scripture says elsewhere, we've studied this uh, scripture recently that points to the blood being the residence of the soul, uh, the life of the soul is in the blood. So uh, again, the, we, the word can reach to even the origin place of uh, the blood, which is uh, bone marrow. Mm -hmm. And you think, sir, yeah. with all of the surgery and stuff I've had, you know, if some, if some bad blood cells get in there, you really need to carve them out because they will spread cancerously all through your body. So, so the fact that the word of God is this sharp, that it can cut even, you know, even better than they can with these huge electronic microscope things that, that show, you know, just amazing how much more advanced the word of God is in surgery than all of the surgeon stuff that we've got so good at in the past decade. Right. Yeah, it's surprising how how uh, piercing and how cutting it can be, yes. uh, and how uh, uh, I, I hesitate to use the word unforgiving, but uh, you know the, the sword lays down the word, and the word um, to us is a commandment. I would think uh, we should take it. Rich, I would think uncompromising rather than unforgiving. That's a the better word. word. It's uncompromising. Boom! This is it. And uh, yep, yep. And it cuts through. Okay, let's try the next slide. Oops, let's try the next slide. There you go. I will meditate on your precepts and thoughtfully regard your ways. The path of life is established by your precepts. Which is another word for word. We don't use precepts much in conversation, but so what does meditating on the word do? Yeah, this uh, well, it um, it's uh, any kind of a meditation is a um, well, I shouldn't say any kind, but uh, a meditation is often to focus yes. and to stay on topic and to zero in on um, a specific area, a concept right. or um, uh, a, a part of life that uh, that needs attention. Um, it, it, that all comes from a, a, a meditative exercise uh, to think things through, right? Uh, and to think them through in the context of the word, and yeah. keeping you know keeping true to the word, understanding that the word is what's doing the defining in a, a situation. It's not the other way around. We don't let the situation define the word, right. but the word is to interpret the situation or the um the the issue that's that's uh, under consideration right and as we as we think about the word of god you know we have morning devotions and then you think about the word of god throughout the day it really does kind of cleanse you and kind of shakes you and yeah yeah what about that and what about that and so how how uh how un how unlike the modern church this verse is the, that we hear the word of God on Sunday morning and think, okay, we got it done. We don't. We yeah. got it done when it becomes so much a part of us that it just comes out of our mouth. Yeah. Uh-huh. Your word I have treasured and stored in my heart that I may not sin against you. Right. So part of the training for the sword of the spirit is to to treasure the word of God so much so that the, the, the training session for the word of God is that we take the time to learn it and to love it and to store it up for us um, as, as, our, as our first responders train for an emergency. So we should train to be good with using the word of God, the sword of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Wow, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's important to realize that uh, the word that goes forth uh, 
is in, is uh, essentially a reflective of the will of God. Uh, we may have our temptations to try to steer that will or to try to interpret the word uh, in a particular way that favors our circumstance. But the fact is that the word is the word. It lays down the truth. And when, it, when the Lord puts it forth, he's got a mission for it. He literally has a mission for his words. Amen. Uh, and they are, uh, they will not return void. They will accomplish eventually, uh, maybe immediately, uh, but uh, they will accomplish what they were spoken for, put out there to do. Amen. And if we're the mouthpiece for the word that God is speaking, then we don't, we're not responsible for the results. We're only responsible for the obedience. Yep. That we would say what God tells us to say. And uh, occasionally we have opportunity to share our testimony or talk about salvation. And, and we can't take that to say, okay, well, nothing happened. It was a waste of time. No, it wasn't. Um, you have no idea what impact it had. Right, right. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. That's Amen. Isaiah. It's also Psalm 103. <laughs> okay, Isaiah 40, verse 8. Interesting. Maybe I crossed them up, but anyway. But the scripture is true, even if I got the reference wrong. Right. Grass is a flower phase, but the word of God will stand forever. So you look out, you know, on your palace and your garden and you say, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Actually, our garden is really cool this year. Uh, Kathy's worked hard on it. Um, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Um, what a visual contrast between, you know, flowers just flopping around in the breeze, but the word of God standing solid forever. Right. Yeah, we get caught up in the temporal, but uh, the word stands eternal. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yeah, <laughs> find this line. Which is an amazing passage because how do we know what the will of God is? Well, if we read his word, we know it lays the light out that says this is wrong, this is right. And then if we have a choice between two choices, then two right choices, then we can still trust the Lord that he will lead us in the way that he wants us to go, um, assuming that we're willing to go either way, though. Yeah. The word illuminates. Amen. And it lights, and um, it's directed, we can see here, to all the way down to our feet that uh, we may walk the course that the word would lead us to on if we let it. Amen. Uh, and uh, important to uh, submit to it. Amen. Therefore, therefore. The Lord Jesus showed Paul everything he would suffer in his first three days of salvation. Um, for me, I'm just as glad that the Lord lights my path for this one moment. Here's the next step. Okay. Take the next step. Okay. I don't need to know, I, you know, when I when I married Kathy, I didn't need to know that there'd be cancer and all kinds of nasty things in my life. And um, I just needed to know that this is what I should do now. And so um, being obedient to that, when I'm obedient to that, it works great because my path is lit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. Uh, the word uh, dwell in you richly, teaching, let the word, I think it begins, let the word dwell in you uh, richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Amen. So the dwell in is an interesting set of words. What do you think about dwell in? Yeah, let me get back here. I just had a, a little note pop up here, and it messed up my screen. Um, so much so for lips. Yeah. Let it dwell in you. Sure, it, it, it uh, brings out the uh, uh, notion that the word is alive, so it yeah. lives. Have it. Have the word itself live in you, richly. Yes. Give it. Give it room. Give it elbow room that it might. Uh, that it might flourish and uh, grow within uh, teaching and admonishing um, that's uh, yeah, among within yourself and among other believers um, in all wisdom. Yeah, 
certainly the word and, and wisdom are um, two concepts that really have to go hand in hand. We have to, we have to uh, consider the, the wisdom of the word. It may not make sense at first. Um, there's much of the word that is uh, staggering in terms of uh, uh, what it says relative to natural phenomena that uh, seems totally an error. But, but give it time and study, and uh, you'd be amazed at what what, uh, what comes from it. Uh, extension of that, of course, is singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, all uh, word based, right? That we have scripture infused in our uh, our music. That's right. Uh, it's really a huge uh, blessing to uh, and and again. Uh, to uh, expand within us, a uh, song can do that like nothing else. And uh, if it's infused with the word, then uh, it, uh, it will have uh, all the more profound effect. Amen. And in the context of thankfulness, very important. These, these, are, these are things that uh, really set the context for the word and uh, give us an idea of, of the word uh, as it's applied uh, in songs and in discussions with others and in a, a spirit or context of thankfulness, this all helps to bring forth the fruit of the word the, uh, um, and, and magnify its power and its effectiveness. Um, uh, very important. Uh, and I, I, you know, I think the whole thing too is contingent on, on maintaining that spirit of agape. Uh, to me, translating the word always from a spirit of agape, uh, realizing that agape can be tough love. Well, surely it was at, at Calvary. Yes. Uh, the, uh, but uh, that, that's, that really sets the, the overall, always sets the, the proper context. Uh, yes. uh, so if it doesn't make sense to you at first, and it's probably because uh, in, in the natural, a natural consideration of it sometimes does seem uh, can seem downright strange, uh, yes. to say the least. And um, a lot of people out there like to pick on it and, and try to find inconsistencies in it and so forth. But uh, with the right spirit, the right uh, perspective, um, it's, it's, it's intent. We'll, uh, you just have to trust it will come forth as yeah. it was intended. God has intention for the word, and you've got to give it time for that to come forth in fruitfulness. Amen. Uh, we are not waging war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Okay. So we're talking again. Yeah, we have to re refer back to uh, the fact that we're talking to sort of the spirit, the word of God. This is a spiritual consideration. It's tempting to, to think only in terms of a, yeah, the natural uh, qualities or attributes of a sword. Um, but uh, again, it, it, it's, you know, we're, we're talking a spiritual context here. This is just a, a quick reminder to remember that. Uh, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive uh, to obey Christ. Is that uh, obey at the bottom there? I think it's obey yes. Christ. Yeah. Yes. It's not coming out here. Amen. No. Yeah. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's funny yeah, to think he... about that as part of our spiritual armor. Um, but resisting... Because we, because we know the word and because we walk in a loving relationship with the creator, resist the devil and he will flee. You don't have to spend all kinds of time. There's a time for deliverance and, and that. I don't argue with that. But if you spend your time loving Jesus instead of chasing demons, it's a much more fulfilling life. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Relying on the word. The word is truth. Yes. Uh, it's the last thing Satan wants to hear. For he is deception. Uh, in all its forms, and uh, it, it, the, the, there's obviously a conflict there that he ultimately knows cannot overcome. Right. Um, this is way oh, go back to Jesus' uh, temptation in the wilderness. The devil came at him with the word, 
but it was out of context uh, when Jesus uh, applied the correct word for the correct context um, immediately the battle was over Amen. but um, you know it, it, again it took it took three phases in that particular case to um, to take uh, full charge of that situation but um, it prevailed the word of course prevailed Amen. in the in the right context so for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind, self-control. So how is this part of the word of God? Well, as we rely on the word of God, it, it displaces our fear. We, we have, oh, okay, the word of God says, I don't have to be afraid of this, therefore, I don't have to be afraid of this. The word of mm -hmm. God says this, therefore, I can have a sound mind and self-control. Right. So... This is day one of the Word of God. I'm not sure that we'll do day two tomorrow or not, but um, so here's the message in Psalm 119, 9 through 16. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, uh, larger psalms. psalms. Um, how can a young person live a clean life? By carefully reading the map of your word. I'm a single, uh, I'm single minded in pursuit of you. Don't let me p miss the road signs you posted. I've banked on your promises in the vault of my heart, so I won't sin my sin uh, myself bankrupt. Be blessed, God. Train me in your ways of living uh, wisely, wise living. I'll tr transfer to my lips all the counsel that comes from your mouth. I delight far more in what you told uh, tell me about living than in gathering a pile of riches. I ponder every morsel of wisdom from you. I attentively watch how you've done it. I relish everything you've told me of life. I won't forget a word of it. Amen. So cool. The word of God is such a, a, a lighthouse to us, such a shining. Um, and, and we haven't even yet be talked about Christ being the living word. Um, hopefully we'll get to that tomorrow. Right. So Lord, we thank you for the, for the Lord's day. We thank you. We can gather in your name. We can sing praises unto you. We can hear your word. We can be abundant in life and love and giving and in all things. Bring blessing to us, O oh Lord. Let us live out the word of God. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you again for your word and your spirit, huh. all that it affords. I appreciate so much having the ability to study it. Uh, we pray that you'll uh, make it part of our lives and bring forth what we need to know to live the lives that glorify you. In Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. Blessings to you all. Walk upright. He bye bye. Is good. Amen. He is good. His mercy endureth forever.